Hi, I'm Mike Hodgetts, and in this tutorial, we're going to go over a demonstration of the Octane Biome Scatter add on released by Alex Pierce 3D. I'm in a brand new scene of uh, the most latest stable release of Octane for Blender. To install the add on, you'd do it as any other add on. I'm going to go Edit, Preferences, Install from Disk, or Install, and select the correct. Uh, version. The most latest version of this is Octane Biome Scatter 1.0.1. Make sure to install it. I already have it installed. So I search for Biome. We have it here. Just make sure it's enabled. So to start, we're going to press N to bring up our properties uh, sidebar. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger and get rid of our widgets. And You'll see, firstly, we've got our biome library at the top with categories and biomes and this little preview window of the four different assets that are contained within each biome. Octane's material scatter allows you to scatter a maximum of four objects, which is why each of the biomes released with this add-on have four separate variations of each one. If you don't see this preview to start with, you may just need to select one of the biomes from the list. So if we have a look at our categories, we have flowers, we have grass, which is our individual uh, kind of grass blades. We also have grass patches, which allows for a more larger distribution of grass across a larger area. We've got a variety of these. We have moss. We've got some little kind of like mossy elements here. Plants, which there are a, a quite a large variety of different plants here. Shrubs and then trees. If we have a look at our trees, we have a selection of different species of tree. Currently, there are, is only one variation of biome for each species, but more will be added in later versions. If we start with, let's say, some maple trees. If we have a look at these, we can see our preview of our maple trees. So let's click Add Biome. And this is going to add our trees to our scene. We've got a bunch of different objects here. If we look at our outliner, we have our main Octane Biomes collection with two sub-collections, Octane Biome Scatter, which is going to be for our scattering systems, and then the Biome Assets which will be whenever you add a new biome, it will add them in here. We can, of course, remove a biome by just deleting it, and it will get rid of it from our outliner and our scene. Let's add that back in. The next option here we have is move biome objects out of view. The reason for this is that in Octane's material scattering, your scattered objects need to be visible and renderable within your scene. Unlike with other Blender scattering add-ons where you could just you know, disable the collection and the scattering would still work, that will not work in this instance. These need to be on and viewable. But we don't want them to be necessarily in our field of view for our camera if we're making a, a scene. So we've got a, a three vector here. So I'm just gonna set this to minus 50 in the Z axis. Move biome objects out of view, and it's just going to move them to whatever we set here. So we can just move these out the way. Um, I always like to just do it kind of you know down on the z-axis, just underneath the floor. But you can do it wherever you want, of course. If we select one of these, and let's go into local view, and let's have a look at our biomes, uh, our trees rendered. Okay, so we've got our tree asset here. Um, you'll see under here we now have biome settings. And these are global sliders that will affect the materials of every biome within your scene. If we start with the autumn slider, let's set this to one, and you'll see that it turns all of our leaves to a nice kind of golden fall color. If we turn winter on, it's gonna get rid of those leaves because obviously all of the leaves are going to have been shedded from the tree because it's winter. Let's set that back to zero. And we'll put autumn back to zero as well. Spring 
just makes everything a little bit more saturated and just a bit more punchy. And if we turn that off and put our snow multiplier on, we can see that we now add snow to our tree. So you can add these to create whatever sort of scene you might like. I'm just going to leave it at the standard normal seasons. Let's come out of local view. And we first of all, we're going to need a plane or something to scatter our assets on. So I'm going to just select my collection up here, add a plane, and we'll scale it up in edit mode by 10 to start with. Let's add a scatter system. And you can see we've added an object here called 00, zero Octane Biome Scatter. If we want to rename this so we can keep things nice and organized, we can just rename it via the add-on. So let's call this Scatter Biome Maple Trees. And we have now a bunch of settings that we can work with. So the first one here, under Instance Generation, we need to select a scatter surface, somewhere to actually scatter our assets on. So I'm going to click the little eyedropper and select my plane. We've got available biomes and at the moment this drop down is just showing the tree's maple because that's the only biome we have in the scene. If we add a different biome, so let's say let's add some grass patches. Mm, let's go with grass patches 4. Add biome. It's going to add those to the center here and again we can just click move biome objects out of view and that will put them way down here. If I press period, it's going to put it right back all the way down to where we had it. If we have a look at our plane again, we've got our maple trees. And now under our biomes drop down, we have both our maples and our grass patches. I'm going to select our trees maple. I'm going to come back to the texture maps in a little bit. Um, but next we're going to deal with instance distribution. Let's just make our panel a little bit bigger. We have an object selection seed, which is just a random seed for selecting, you know, the, the distribution of which assets are getting scattered where. Under distribution, we have a bunch of different um, options. One instance per vertex, it's relatively straightforward and obvious. One instance per edge. Again, relatively obvious, although one thing to be aware of with both this and one instance per polygon and the evenly spaced instances on edges is that Octane will triangulate your meshes. So one instance per edge wouldn't just add it, you know, one here, one here, one here, and one here. It would also add one here because it would triangulate this plane. So just something to be uh, aware of. Let's do one instance per polygon to start with. And again, this is going to triangulate this plane and we'll add two separate instances. We've got a number of instances, which is one for the moment, uh, but it will still instance two because we're using one instance per polygon. And the seed is obviously our random distribution, which we'll get into when we use our randoms. Next, we have instance orientation, where we can align our instances to the surface normals of our mesh. And let's set the alignment factor to one. And if we go into render view, let's see how this looks. There we go, we now have two trees scattered on our plane. And the, the cool thing about this is that if I go into edit mode, control T to triangulate them. So it's actually now got that. And if I select that edge and press V, Let's scale by individual origins. I'm just going to scale these way down. What this is now going to allow us to do is going to be able to manually place our assets wherever we want. So we're going to have an asset per face. Maybe that's what you want. Maybe it's not. But it, this option will allow you to get a lot of fine control over where your instances are being placed. In this, in, in this instance, in this case, I guess, I'm gonna delete all these vertices, I'm gonna add the plane back in, and I'm gonna scale it up quite big. Let's change these one instance per polygon to random instances by relative area. 
this is the main option that you're going to want for randomly distributing things around. So we've only got now one instance. Well, that's because we've only set one instance. So let's set this to, say, 10. And we now have a bunch of trees. We can obviously change the seed of these as well. Change where they're getting distributed. We have our instance transforms next, and these are random transforms for each of our objects. So if I set the scale min to say 0.5, it's gonna randomly scale our trees and give us a bit more variation. We can also set the rotations. So I'm just gonna set 360 degrees in the Z axis as a maximum. And this will randomly rotate our instances. And again, we've got translation as well. I'm not going to bother randomly translating our instances. But of course, you could do if you wanted to. Let's add another scatter system and add some grass. So we're going to add another one. I'm going to rename this as grass patches. Our scatter surface is going to be our plane. Our biomes is going to be our grass patches. We're going to leave the texture maps. Again, we're going to come back to these shortly. Let's set random instances by relative area. Align them to the surface normal. And let's say, let's put a bunch of these, 10,000. Feels like we need a bit more than that. 100,000. There we go, and we now have a nice little kind of meadow uh, with some trees on it. Really fast and simple to be able to scatter our assets around. Next, let's paint some texture maps for both our culling and our density maps. The difference between these is that the culling map will take our total instances and then delete parts of it from our culling map. With the density map, it says here, density map for use with relative density distribution. If we set this to relative density, nothing's going to happen immediately because we don't have a density map set. So it's going to behave almost exactly the same as relative area. The difference, however, is that we can create our density maps. And these will take all of the number of instances and distribute them only where we want them based on our texture maps. So let's come out of render view and let's start with our culling maps. You can also see we've got two different types here, either grayscale or RGB ID map. So I'm gonna go into texture paint on our, um, on our plane. I'm gonna click new image and we'll call this culling. I'll leave it as 1024, that's okay. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint, let's make my brush a little bit bigger, and I'm just going to paint something like this. Just nice and simple. And we now need to image, save as, and I'll save this as culling. The one thing, that, the one thing to be aware of is that you do need to save your images. These won't work straight out of the gate with just textured. Uh, we do need to have them as saved images. If I now go on my culling map selection, I can just come down to my culling, or of course I could click open and open my culling map here. If you already have something painted, for instance, a texture map, or you know something that you've painted in Photoshop, or a map that you've created from say Gaia or something like that. This is on our grass patches. If we now go back into render view, you'll see that our grass is now only distributed in that area where we painted our tech, our culling map. We can also get rid of this and we could set this as our density map instead. So let's select the culling map and we have a similar result. We do however get these kind of 
uh, kind of clipping value, which is it's distributing it along this edge still, which is a bit bizarre. Um, so I would always recommend using a culling map over a density map. But the option is there. You know, you could also combine these and have them in two different ones. So you could have a density map with then a separate culling map over the top of it. And that would still work. We can, of course, also invert our map. So if I click invert, it's going to update the shaders. It's going to take a second. And there we go. We've now inverted our culling map and we have our instances on the invert of our painted area. As I said, we have a grayscale and an RGB ID map. The RGB ID map allows us to use a multi-channel map to separate different elements. So for instance, let's delete our, no, let's leave our path grass it. Uh, we'll have our maple trees and then let's add some flowers as well. Let's say add these kind of yellow uh, calendine as well. So let's add these into our biomes and move them out of view. We're going to add another scatter system. Let's rename this as flowers. Let's set our surface scatter and our biomes. So let's go to our texture paint and I'm going to add a new image and call it RGB culling. Let's change the view mode to paint. And I'm going to start by painting the green channel, which I'm going to say is going to be our grass. So if we just paint this green everywhere. Great. Let's change our mode to add. And let's add some red. So we're going to add red. And we're going to use red as maybe where, our, let's say, our flowers are going to be, because it looks yellow. So let's just kind of paint along here. That's where our flowers are going to be. And then finally, we're going to paint our blue channel, which is going to be here. And we're going to have this as where our trees are going to be. There we go. So we've now got a kind of bit of a crazy looking multicolored map. Let's save as and call save this as RGB culling. Let's go back to our layout view. And so in our maple trees, we're going to select our RGB culling. We're going to set this from grayscale to RGB ID map. And the RGB channel, so channel one is red, two is green, three is blue. We said the trees were going to be our blue channel. And let's, yeah, we can leave that at 10. I think, well, let's maybe push this up to say 20. Our grass patches. We could leave this the same, but because we painted it everywhere, so it doesn't really matter. But let's get rid of our density map, and we're going to set this to green. And on our flowers, we need to set up the rest of these. So going to be relative area, instances, I don't know, 10,000. And our culling map is going to be RGB culling. It's going to be an ID map and it's going to be the first channel in red. So now if we go into render view, this should distribute these correctly based on our culling map. That sort of looks correct. Our trees are seem to be in the right area. Maybe if we take our flowers and let's bump up the scale just so we can maybe see it and make sure that they're working. There we go. Oh, we need to actually align these to the surface normals as well. There we go. And we can now see that we've got our trees distributed where we painted them in that area. We have this kind of row of flowers where we've painted those and the grass is everywhere. I hope that this tutorial was useful and if you have any questions in relation to the Octane Biome Scatter or any of the other add-ons available from Alex Pierce 3D, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us. Thanks.